Welcome to the first Abitorial Mini. This is uh, gonna be the first in a series of videos where I take some more general topics and speak in a more looser form about things. I've got a lot of ideas I wanna talk about and not enough time to make uh, big scripts about all of them, so I'm gonna try a new thing here and be a bit more casual. So today I actually wanna talk a little bit about weapon design. I feel like weapons are just as fun to talk about as characters. A good weapon can accentuate uh, character design, and just as well, a good weapon on its own can become iconic. Uh, they can have character, they can have story. In a more philosophical sense, weapons can be seen as an extension of the self and therefore the character. So weapons as an accessory can be just as expressive as characters can be. And I think that's fascinating. Which is why I've decided to challenge myself, I guess, and take a look at some Keyblades from Kingdom Hearts. I'm not a Kingdom Hearts fan. I've played the first game to completion, and I've played enough of Kingdom Hearts 2 to know that I was getting sick of it before quitting. But I do recognize that the Keyblade is an iconic weapon and represents the entire franchise. And I chose Kingdom Hearts in particular because it has tons, tons of Keyblades that try to reinterpret the idea of what this weapon is. Because I'm not exactly partial to Kingdom Hearts, I can look at these with a more critical eye and talk more about, like, sheer design elements and things I look for in weapons. Now, I'm not here to discuss the realistic practicality of Keyblades as wielded weapons. I understand that it's a fictional weapon in a video game and it's meant to be wielded in a, in a more fantastic sort of way than a realistic fighting style. I'm not going to be talking about, like, the weapon balance or... I, I think there are a few other videos that talk about trying to apply the Keyblade as a practical weapon and I understand that it's not but we're going to give the game the benefit of the doubt and say that they can be wielded as weapons. So one of the things I'm actually looking for in Keyblades, in particular why I singled out this weapon, is because Keyblades make use of a very simple shape language to convey the idea of key as weapon. Uh, you have the ring of the key serving as the hilt, you have a narrow shaft, and you have the head or the tooth forming the striking point of the Keyblade. Now I understand in motion that the striking point is actually the back of the head, and that's something I personally don't agree with, but we're going to ignore that, and we're just going to talk about how it plays into the overall shape and design of the weapon. Overall, even looking at the basic Kingdom Key, I, this is a visually functional design. I am absolutely fine with the Kingdom Key as a weapon design. It, it set the standard for the entire franchise, and which is what we're going to be using as the standard for what other Keyblades are going to be compared to. In fact, a lot of the shapes I see out of the Kingdom Key are similar to the Chinese Tiger Hook Sword. Honestly, one of my favorite weapons, and really wish we could see more of this weapon in other games. I am very annoyed that the only representative we have of this weapon in mainstream games is Cabal from Mortal Kombat. This is such a cool weapon that it really is a shame we don't see more of it. But anyway, I also feel that the way a weapon is wielded is also as important as the way it's designed. A weapon in motion is also integral to how a weapon expresses itself, so that will key into its uh, physical design and balance based on how a keyblade is meant to be wielded. And according to some of the later games, uh, perhaps not the first game, but definitely Kingdom Hearts 2 and onwards, a lot of Keyblade combat involves a lot of flying around and doing a lot of flippy dippy twirly shit. So just a lot of like slashing motions, big wide swings, striking, and a lot of weapon twirling. Which are also kind of like Tiger Hook Swords now that I think about it. There's a lot of similarities between the two weapons, aside from the odd striking point, but that's going to be something I consider when we're looking at the shape balance of a Keyblade. To kick off this particular Abitorial Mini, I actually asked my Twitter, as well as some friends on Discord, to submit their Keyblades to me. I wanted them to submit their favorite and their least favorite, and I'm going to be taking a look at them and seeing how they hold up. So unsurprisingly, with the most votes as, po as popular Keyblade, we're looking at the Oblivion from Kingdom Hearts 1. This is actually one of the Keyblades I actually do not mind. Uh, Shape-wise, it has a lot of similarities to the Kingdom Key. It's got some edge to it. I'm not really a fan of overly edgy weapons, but the fact that it maintains the same kind of shape symmetry as the Kingdom Key means visually I think this is a good Keyblade. It's got a nice straight shaft. Uh, the head of the Keyblade is ornamented, but the silhouette still gives you the idea that this is the head of the key. The ring is not too ornamented. It's still a simple ring shape, and it, it is a very readable, very noticeable weapon. I actually like it a lot. This is probably my favorite Keyblade that's not the Kingdom Key. Also, unsurprisingly, we got a lot of votes coming in for the Oathkeeper. 
uh, which I understand is also sort of the sister keyblade to the Oblivion. They're meant to be wielded together. You obviously have this dark and light theme going on, and I'm... I'm probably about to disappoint a lot of you, but I really, really don't like the Oath Keeper. I think this is a very clumsily designed weapon. The hilt is fine, and I don't even mind the double-pronged shaft. It kind of reminds me of the Soul Calibur in some essences, but it's the head of this weapon that is a goddamn mess to me, because I can see that it's meant to be the two prongs coming together to form that shape, but one, the shape doesn't even come together in any cohesive way. Uh, the star and, like, the heart shape aren't even, like, intertwined the way you think they would be because the weapon is made of two different prongs. And the coloration on the star also doesn't particularly gel well with the rest of the weapon. I wouldn't even mind the fact that there's a heart on there if it wasn't such a small shape that doesn't, that just sort of gets lost in all the, in all the tangledness of this entire mess here. And, and there's a weird little hook coming out of the top too. I don't know what that's about. And just the asymmetry of that top piece of the head of the Oathbreaker is really what kills it for me and why I really dislike looking at it, even in motion. I really hate to break it to you guys, I just don't like this Keyblade. I think that top part is a visual mess that did not need to be that complicated. We're gonna move on and go through the general list of other things people submitted. So after this, uh, this isn't, I don't, I didn't really keep a vote order aside from these two. So up next we have, this is the Crystal Snow from Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, this is the Frozen Keyblade. As a result, this Keyblade is already cursed because of what's dangling at the end of the keychain. The rest of the Keyblade, I can see what they're going for. Overall, it's got a very vertical shape to it because everything's pointing upwards as a result of everything forming of the Crystal Tower. I know what it's supposed to represent, and I see that they're using snowflakes as the head of the weapon. I don't like this weapon. Um, one, because the thickness of the shaft and the verticality of the vertical elements of the hilt do not translate well to a twirling weapon like a keyblade typically is wielded. And additionally, because like the tower is sort of cascaded into like segments and shapes, like it doesn't feel good as a solid shaft for the weapon. Furthermore, the snowflakes, they feel slapped on. One thing I think about when it comes to the shape language of a Keyblade is that the focal points of it typically tend to be the hilt and the head, and I typically like seeing, like, a geometry and shape language that agrees with the rest of the weapon. The fact that the snowflake is literally just stuck on here means that it is using shapes that aren't congruous with the rest of the weapon, and just for the, just as well, there are three other smaller snowflakes stuck on here for no fucking good reason, it, it, and it just makes the weapon look uglier overall. I understand that a lot of Keyblades from Kingdom Hearts 3 are very overblown, and we're going to visit a few other of them later. Uh, this is probably the least congruous of them, but I don't like it. Someone also submitted the Diamond Dust. I'm actually not sure where this Keyblade is from. Uh, I have a lot of issues with the way its shapes are just kind of going in every sort of random direction. Not that I'm demanding symmetry out of all Keyblades, but I don't, I don't think the sort of chaotic shapes of this Keyblade do it any favor. There's no particular shapes to rest on that doesn't feel like the weapon is constantly in flux. And I also don't really like the curve of the shaft. Now, originally I had a problem with the way it's curved because we're also dealing with the random snowflake stuck on the head, but after I realized that Keyblades are wielded to strike from the back of the head, this sort of has a sort of scimitar curve to it, which I still don't like because of the jaggedness of this particular weapon. I feel like there needs to strike a balance between, like, jagged shapes and smooth shapes so it gives your eye somewhere to rest and focus on, because otherwise I feel like this weapon is just wobbly and wavy and distorted at all times, and it doesn't really give me a good sense of solidarity. Now, I am actually aware that there is a different version of this weapon in a game called Kingdom Hearts Union Cross or something, and that this intrudes the idea of Keyblades that evolve and change shape over time. And there's this here is, a, is the primary form of the Diamond Dust from Union X. And I actually like this one a little better, if only for the straight shaft that it has. It unfortunately loses it as the weapon levels up and turns more into the diamond dust we saw earlier, and if I were to redesign this weapon, I would take this and maybe make the shaft a little longer to match the shaft of other keyblades. Still not my favorite, but I, I, I prefer this shape to the one we just had. 
Next, we are looking at the Dual Disc from Kingdom Hearts 2. This is the Tron-inspired Keyblade. I don't mind it visually. I am constantly reminded that I am that you are striking with the back of the head, which means that the weighting of this weapon is balanced to the side of the weapon that you are not swinging towards. But looking at just the weapon, I actually think this is kind of fine just because I kind of like how the circular shapes balance each other out. I do wish that the striking head, sorry, this is not the striking point, but I kind of wish that the head of the Keyblade, the tooth uh, segment, didn't have all these weird jagged Tetris shapes coming out of it. That might be overblown for the sort of sort of digitized feel that's going for to represent Tron. But I think if it was just a smooth light disc edge as the striking head of the weapon, I, I, I would enjoy it a little better. But I think this is okay, it's passable, it's not an eyesore to look at, and it does feel like a Tron type of thing, so I'll give it a pass. This is the Fenrir Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, this is the key we get from Cloud in KH2, and it incorporates a lot of elements that are closer to the Cloud in that game, which is modeled after Advent Children. And uniquely, this actually completely defies the entire shape language of Keyblades by not having a tooth, but instead modeling the entire blade section of it like a car key. At which point, we're not even treating it like a Keyblade anymore. This is effectively a sword. And for that gimmick alone, this is actually kind of an okay Keyblade. The hilt has elements of what you'd find from Cloud's motorcycle in Advent Children, which is where the weapon takes its name from. It even it's got some of the like the blade bandages he had in Kingdom Hearts One, which are which are you know I always found kind of silly, but whatever. It's a it is, it's a unifying element here, so you know who it belongs to. I have a one really petty gripe against this Keyblade, and that's the keychain, which is that dumb wolf medallion they gave to Cloud in Advent. Children. Children after marketing decided that all oh, he needs an animal motif and a medallion that we can sell so we're gonna start saying that Cloud's a wolf now he's he is like a lone wolf and just reminding me of Advent Children makes me unreasonably angry so minus points for that for very petty reasons but in a more in a more visual sense this is one of the more functional Keyblades just because it stopped trying to be a Keyblade it's now a sword. There is a version of this in Kingdom Hearts uh, Union X that is the upgraded version of the Fenrir that someone also recommended. I don't feel too differently about this Keyblade, it's just a bit more ornamental and has more elements of the motorcycle worked in, and at least it gets rid of the dumb blade bandages. I'm not offended by this one, it's an okay upgrade to a weapon that was already okay, so we'll give this one the pass. I believe we're looking at the Hero's Crest from Kingdom Hearts 2. This is their version of the Hercules Keyblade. This one's looking a little tacky for my taste. I understand why they had to go for the dual pillars look to get the uh, roof look on top looking the way it does. I kinda wish it was just one pillar and they integrated the little sun icon into the head of the Keyblade with a bit more grace than it is now because it just looks like the, like the snowflake before. It just looks like it's stuck on there. There's no satisfying geometry to the way it's worked into the weapon. It's literally just shoved into the side. But if if the shaft were just a central column and it worked in tandem with the geometry of the sun to create the head of the Keyblade, this would actually be an okay uh, design. A lot of the elements are consistent. You have a lot of the marble and the column shapes consistently together with the hilt, the ring, and the shaft. It's the sun that kind of stands out here and just had them forcing themselves to go for the two-pillar look to get the architecture is perhaps trying a little too hard to be clever. I don't think it being two pillars makes the weapon look good in motion. It, it provides a thickness to the silhouette that is not particularly welcome to this weapon. So this one has a lot of potential, but they kind of, they kind of botched it, I think. So just as a side note, I included this one here because it's, I think, one of my personal favorites. This is the Pumpkin Head from Kingdom Hearts 1. Uh, like the Oblivion, I feel like this is a very functional Keyblade. It's simple, it's elegant, it maintains the shape language, and it being a very spindly Keyblade is not only, not only makes it unique, but also sort of harkens to the style of what you would see in the architecture of, like, of Nightmare Before Christmas. The sort of look of the way Iron Fences look in that film and in the, is very consistent with the shapes used by this Keyblade. It's simple, it's on point, it's elegant, I like it. This one gets a pass. 
someone submitted the Rejection of Fate to me. I couldn't get a good screenshot of this uh, Keyblade. This is someone's uh, vector recreation of it. Honestly, this is also kind of an inoffensive Keyblade to me. Uh, it's got consistent shape language. It has nice narrow sh uh, shapes to it. The head, I, interestingly, is more pointed than what a normal Keyblade is. It looks, this looks more like a thrusting weapon than anything, which may disagree with how the weapon is meant to be wielded because you're going to be doing a lot of twirling and bashing with the side of the weapon that is not jagged. Just visually, I think this is a simple and effective Keyblade. I don't mind it. This is the Sleeping Lion, I think also from Kingdom Hearts 2. This is Squall's Keyblade, and honestly, this is a pretty cool one too. I remember the, the Lionheart from Kingdom Hearts 1 it was also a pretty good looking one, if only because the visual shapes you associate with Squall and his gunblade just translate naturally well to the Keyblade here. You even have the revolving cylinder at the head of the hilt here, which is really nice. Yeah, this has very clean geometry, working in the lion motif as well as this uh, act, uh, the head shape here just works naturally with the feel of this weapon. It's an A plus weapon to me. This is the two become one. I have no idea where this is from. This is one of those weapons where it begins embodying what I've been associating to be the aesthetic of Kingdom Hearts, which is pointy bits everywhere. And it creates a sort of really complicated silhouette to the weapon that perhaps doesn't translate well to it being in motion. I was a little weirded out by the blade being what it is, or rather what is serving as the shaft, which is normally a blade and sort of like twirling and curving into the head shape right there. And again, it's one of those weird cases where you're striking with the back of the head and not with the actual weighted side of it, even though this weapon is curving in the correct way where the edge of the blade is. But I think this weapon is trying to be too many things at once, to be honest. This would be an okay sword if you removed a lot of the key elements to it, but it's not a very good key blade. Not the worst I've seen but really not something I would consider to be a good Keyblade. Now, someone also submitted to me the Wayward Wind. This is a Keyblade wielded by a character named Ventus. I don't know who the hell this kid is. This weapon befuddles me because of an, an interesting thing. This is the first Keyblade I've seen in which the shaft is not a direct continuation of the actual grip of the weapon, but is instead coming out of the side of the ring hilt as one of its ends. And the visuals of this weapon are befuddling to me because I'm expecting different things out of the way the weapon is weighted based on where things are meant to go because symmetrically you think that you'd want to be striking with where the weapon is curving and where the head is but it's not actually you're actually st striking with the black side of the weapon toward the enemy and again you're striking with the back of the head of the keyblade where there is no distinguishing striking point point. and furthermore like as if i wasn't confused enough by this weapon the character ventus who wields this grips the this weapon upside down, which makes this weapon even more visually confusing to me. The shape balance of this weapon does not, I don't feel, adapts well to reverse grip style like fighting. And this is just kind of, I know I, it is interesting because it is, because it is asymmetrical, but the asymmetry doesn't do this weapon any favors. It, there's so many mismatching shapes to this weapon that I just, I, I can't imagine it being like a visually cohesive weapon in combat. I don't like it. This person also submitted, at the same time, the Lost Memory, which is the evolved version of the Wayward Wind, I, say, I think, or at least the, the, the next Keyblade that Ventus wields. Now, I actually like this a lot better. Uh, in fact, I kind of wish this were the Oathbreaker, to be honest. It has a similar wing motif at the grip, and it has a much nicer uh, consistent shaft that uses the same sort of material and shape language. And it's got a sort of heart with only one, only like half a heart and one wing on it because Kingdom Hearts has, has gotten to that point of edge, I guess. The only one thing that bothers me is that the wing of the heart is pointing downwards instead of up. If it were point, if it were basically reverse the shape, it would create a much nicer shape. Uh, language to hit that uh, head shape of the key and keep the weapon in a bit more of a visual balance that's more pleasing to me, I guess. Now that I'm reminded that Ventus is wielding this weapon, I'm sort of dreading the idea of holding this one backwards also, and that... I don't want to take away from the weapon for that. I still think it's a good-looking keyblade, but man, fuck off with your reverse grip keyblades. I, I'm not into that. I had another nomination for the Wheel of Fate from Kingdom Hearts 3. This Keyblade makes me angry. This is such an 
ugly weapon that I know, I know there's a thing in Kingdom Hearts 3 where you're actually typically not using the Keyblade and you're using the weapon that it transforms into. And from what little I saw, this weapon actually transforms into a flag, which sure, okay, fine. Just swinging around the Wheel of Fate, this is a... This is a weapon that is busier than it needs to be. As I was saying with most Kingdom Hearts 3 Keyblades, uh, like just the cannons coming off of the hilt that form the binding point for like the mast that is also the shaft that has the net shapes creating this triangle where the shaft should be and then just the steering wheel as the head. This is a weapon that is trying way too hard to incorporate way too much shit, and I just do not like how it looks. I know in practice you actually can't even see the nets, but the fact that they're there still means that this weapon is overdoing it. And what makes me upset is that while looking for this weapon, I also came across the Kingdom Hearts 2 Pirates of the Caribbean weapon called Follow the Wind, and this is a much simpler, much more functional Keyblade. They had it right the first time around. This has a very simple, elegant shape language to it, and all of it works together. I don't see why they had to overblow it with the Wheel of Fate. Maybe don't bring this Keyblade back exactly if you want to work on something new, but god, the Wheel of Fate is so overdone compared to Follow the Wind. And that just makes me doubly as upset, because they knew how to make a good pirate Keyblade, they just said to go extra. Okay, well I think we've had enough fun there. Let's talk about the Keyblades people didn't like. So starting from the top, someone submitted the Divine Rose from Kingdom Hearts 1. I can sort of see where they're coming from this. This is, even though it has a lot of the functional shape language of uh, what I think makes a good Keyblade, I think there are too many elements that either m the colors mismatch or that I think the shapes are just kind of boring or not very exciting. Specifically, the, uh, the purple shaft of the weapon, it almost looks like a placeholder while you're thinking of something cooler to put there. And the purple just kind of stands out as being unrelated to the rest of the weapon that's been using, like, greens and reds and, like, these sort of darker, like, more neutral browns and yellows for the hilt. The purple really is just the standout, like, sore thumb here. This isn't the worst Keyblade I've seen, but I can see why you well, someone may not like it. That said, there is a version of the Divine Rose in Kingdom Hearts uh, Union Cross that has a bit more consistent shape language. It does still have the straight shaft, but uh, it is interacting in a more interesting way with the rose vines. The colors have been redone to be more consistent so that the shaft is now blue, which has more to do with the sort of stained glass blues, blues, yellows, and magentas on the ring. And overall, this one comes together a little better than the classic Divine Rose. I can see why you may not like this weapon, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. This is the Earthshaker. I have no idea where it's from. This is wielded by Terra. So I guess the idea being that he's the big guy, that he's got to have a big boy Keyblade. Now, shape-wise, I don't mind a lot of the shapes they use here because it's sort of consistent with uh, how the hilt translates into the, uh, the shaft itself. It being a little on the thicker side is something I maybe don't appreciate. If it were meant to be a more elegant weapon, I would have liked to see it more, like, slimmed down, but it's not. This is a big boy Keyblade. I don't really mind it, but I also understand that this evolves later into the ends of the Earth. This one I take a bit more issue with, because from here you can actually clearly see that the shaft of the weapon is one whole entire piece, and it's not really interacting with the rest of the weapon. It's just The rest of the weapon is just kind of glued onto the sides of this stick. And there's a lot more negative space going on here, as there's more cutouts for the top piece, as well as the way the hilt connects to the shaft has disconnected the rest of the thickness of that blade. So we're losing a lot of the thickness that was on the last uh, Keyblade, the Earthshaker, which is it's weird because I said I didn't like how thick it was, but now that they've separated the thickness, I still don't like it. In fact, I think it's worse because it makes the blade look a lot less solid. For the character that this is meant to be associated with, this sort of the big man of the trio, I guess, this weapon looks a lot more fragile than his previous weapon, which uh, is a strange, strange step up for what's supposed to be the evolution of the Earthshaker. I will have to, yeah, I don't like this one either. This is the Happy Gear from Kingdom Hearts 3. 
we're going to be seeing a lot more Kingdom Hearts 3 Keyblades on here. This is obviously the Monsters Inc. one, and God, this is an ugly piece of shit. Everything is trying way too hard to get your attention. This is what I mean when I say that Kingdom Hearts 3 Keyblades are trying to shove everything into the fucking weapon. You've got like the wrench head up top. It's you, then the monster shaped, like the face shaped little uh, panel up there where the head is, and it's wearing its own helmet. And even the shaft is too busy because it's got all this pipe work going on. And I just realized there's the fucking door on the on the base of the hilt and that just makes me upset. Everything in this weapon is fighting to say, no, ooh, ooh, look at me, look at me, and it's a mess. I couldn't even imagine this weapon in motion. I just, I'm sick of looking at it as a still. It's just, it's just a wreck of a weapon. And despite that, I think there are still worse Keyblades in it. We're going to get to that in just a minute. This is the Jungle King in Kingdom Hearts 1. I am not offended by this weapon, but I'm not particularly excited by it either. This uses the basic shape language of what we established of Keyblades in Kingdom Hearts 1, of having a narrow shaft, a ring-shaped grip, and a head or a tooth, perhaps too literally in this case. The only fault I'll really give this weapon is that it's not creative enough. It's, it's kind of boring to look at, but it's not, it's not the worst Keyblade I've ever seen. This is the Metal Chocobo, also from Kingdom Hearts 1. This was the Keyblade Cloud gave you in that game, and I can actually see what they were going for here. They're attempting to translate the basic shapes of the Buster Sword into a Keyblade. You can tell why it's, it's got the same kind of grip. The hilt has the kind of riveted shape of the uh, hilt of the Buster Sword, and it just being a flat piece of metal with holes cut out in it was attempting to achieve that Buster Sword feel. It's even got materia slots in it, I guess. What I don't really like is the sort of Swiss cheese cutout of the head, uh, making the weapon feel more fragmented in place than it needs to be, especially if it's trying to emulate the Buster Sword, which is iconic because it's just a big slab of metal. Obviously, I know they can't do that here with a key because it has to have a key head on it, but I don't think it translates well to the way the weapon symmetry is meant to be. The, the, obviously, the, the most fun thing about, about the Buster Sword is that it's got girth and weight to it, which you can't do if if the shape language of a keyblade demands there has to be a heavier head than the rest of the weapon. Obviously, this is a, this is adjusted by the Fenrir in Kingdom Hearts 2 by just foregoing the entire key structure and just saying, fuck it, it's a car key now. But for being as plain as this weapon is, it's not even overly detailed, but I just don't think the idea translated well to this keyblade. Thumbs up for the Chocobo keychain, though. This is the Midnight Blue. I think this is some kind of PlayStation pre-order bonus for Kingdom Hearts 3. And for once, for being a KH3 uh, weapon, it's not completely overblown and oversaturated with details. But I still hate this one. One, the curve, now that I know where the striking point of a Keyblade is, is actually going in the wrong direction. There's something about the shapes used here that just feels like I'm, I'm, I'm attacking someone with a lucky charm. There's a moon, there's a star, and like the sort of cotton candy feel of the shaft. I guess you gotta get that PlayStation branding in there because we gotta get the circle and the X button there too. Don't get it confused. This ain't no Xbox Keyblade. That would honestly be kind of fun to see. I kind of want to see an Xbox Keyblade now, but mm, this is, this is tacky in a way that I don't really accept. This is the monochrome from, I think, Kingdom Hearts 2. This is from the Steamboat Mickey world. If it wasn't already apparent, I can see why a lot of people put this Keyblade on here, because it's this very fat and clumsy weapon. I get why they picked the elements they did, but for being what a Keyblade is supposed to be and how it's meant to be wielded, it's clumsy, it's thick, in most of the wrong places. I feel like I'm looking at a Photoshop instead of a weapon, that they just took elements and pasted them together in a certain fashion to make a weapon, but not in a way that actually gives a cohesive structural shape to it. It's just stick a bunch of stuff together and form the Keyblade out of it, and that's why I don't like it. This is the Mysterious Abyss from Kingdom Hearts 2. This is one of those Keyblades I don't like because I don't feel like elements match up together because, well, I mean, they do, obviously. They have, it's, it's got a nautical theme to it. The shaft is, is meant to be a spout of water culminating in the head of the Keyblade being the curves of the wave. And the bottom of it has the shell motif. And I think what's happening is that you have two motifs here that don't blend well. The shells transitioning to the water makes it look like I'm looking at two pieces of this, of two different weapons. I don't really like the idea that they're trying to get too clever on what defines the head of the Keyblade either. The head of the Keyblade needs to be a sort of visual icon, and it being just a bunch of waves feels like they're trying to be 
maybe too clever on what counts as the head. Uh, so this one's also tacky in all the wrong ways because it's it's sort of mismatched. I would have accepted a ward uh, a keyblade that was all water themed or a keyblade that was all shell themed, but not both at once. This is the Nano Gear from Kingdom Hearts 3. I think this is the worst one out of the entire bunch in KOH 3. There's one worse than it, but I'll get to it in just a moment. And this is what I mean when I say they're trying to cram too much shit into the same keyblade. They could have chosen to go for a sort of like red and blue Baymax armor themed thing, but they also decided, hey, we gotta have like the black nano things and maybe that'll be the head of the keyblade. Oh, fancy. But they've also got like, you know, the gumdrop things here and they're trying to implement every piece of the big hero six into this into one weapon and it's just ugly as a result it is incohesive it is a mess and i hate this i absolutely hate this this is barely a weapon this is a joke now in the dislike pile was uh the keyblades wielded by i think aqua uh the rain fell and the storm fall uh, I believe in the same vein as uh, Terra's two weapons. I don't actually hate these two Keyblades. They have a very consistent geometry to them that actually works with the shapes. Uh, the Rainfowl has a lot of diamond shapes to them. I don't know why it is when I design things, but I just put diamonds everywhere and that counts as my sort of ornamenting. So maybe I have a bias toward that. I don't know. But just the fact that it's got a lot of crisscrossing shapes and like the the shaft itself has a sort of crisscrossing motif means that there's a lot of consistency with this keyblade. I'm only slightly bothered by the ring shape where it's connected by the bottom and not the, well, not the shaft of it, but that's only a very minor grievance. The Stormfall is a different thing altogether. I think it loses a bit of the unity between the shaft and the grip by the grip taking a more circular shape and the uh, rest of the keyblade taking a more jagged geometric shape. This one has an interesting bit where it takes a more square shape at the head but still has a sort of diamond motif to it. But honestly, there, there's a consistent shape language to Aqua's keyblades that I don't actually mind looking at. I don't think these are bad keyblades at all. This is the Three Wishes from Kingdom Hearts 1. This is the Keyblade from the Aladdin world. I actually don't mind this Keyblade. I think this is simple. I think it's elegant. There's a weird little fin coming out of the shaft that maybe we could do without, but like there's just some simple elegant curves and the head of the Keyblade comes together in a satisfying way. It may be overly simplistic, but keeping it simple sometimes is best. I would love to see a version of this Keyblade rendered with a more brassy texture to really bring out like the sort of feel of, I guess, the brass lamp or of sort of Agrabah flavor to it. But I actually think this is a fine Keyblade. I don't mind this one at all, which is why I'm really upset at the version of the Three Wishes that appeared in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. Oh boy, why'd you have to do that? Why you gotta do my boy like this? Now they've overly ornamented where the tip is supposed to be because I can't tell that's meant to be fire? Why are we getting fire out of an Aladdin-themed Keyblade now? If that's still meant to sort of be the curly brass motif, then they've way overdone it, especially since they've not only kept the weird fin at the shaft, they've evolved it into more fire. This becomes something similar to the Diamond Dust, where there's so many wobbly shapes that I have no frame of reference of to where the structure of the weapon is, except for the shaft, I guess. But no, I prefer the classic Three Wishes over this one. And now I get to talk about what some people have nominated as their favorite weapons, but is honestly my nomination for among the ugliest Keyblades in the series. And these are the Ultima weapons. Oh God, these weapons are so overly ornamented and so ugly. I've taken a really a real dislike to what I describe as swords with chandeliers in them, where they have all this crisscrossing filigree, swirly, curvy, like just, noodles, I guess, coming in and out of the weapon. And there's a weird part where you can even see that beneath the Ultima weapon here that it that, that if you took away all the ornamenting, it would just be a sword. And it wouldn't be a very pleasing sword either because of, again, all of this dumb chandelier nonsense. These, just these shapes that are just going in, they're just there just to be there. This weapon would not look good in motion because it's got too much details. There is a thing to be said about a design that has so many intricate details and parts 
that may look good on paper, but becomes dizzying to look in motion. Um, this is the same theory behind why Michael Bay's Transformers are so disorienting to look at, because there's so many minute moving parts and different specific minute details of them that there's nowhere to focus on, so when they move, it just becomes all a blur. And I also understand that the Ultima Weapon has a unique design coming into every single Kingdom Hearts game it's been in. There's one in KH2, there's one in Birth by Sleep, and there's one in Kingdom Hearts 3. They are all ugly, and I hate them all. These weapons give me so much pain. It's the worst. I hate it. I don't like this these weird noodles crossing in and out of the weapon and how it just comes together to, again, what I was saying, the Kingdom Hearts aesthetic of fucking spikes everywhere. This is awful. I hate it. But not as much as I hate what is arguably and almost the most voted ugliest weapon in the entire series, the X-Blade. I don't know where this weapon's from, but it needs to go away. Everything I hate with the Ultima weapons brought to an even stupider climax. I know that it's not even trying to be a Keyblade anymore, it doesn't even have a key head to it, it is just a straight up sword. But that's what makes this even worse, because the width of this weapon, counting all the filigree that's here, is as wide as a person, and that just doesn't make for good wielding. The fact that it is two kingdom keys crossed together just makes this weapon just not even... It doesn't just make this weapon stupid, it's disrespectful to the Kingdom Key, even. Because it the, the beauty of the Kingdom Key is how simple it is, and they're like, nah, let's spruce up the Kingdom Key and make it the ultimate Kingdom Key, and the fact that you hold it by the joined hilts instead of the actual two hilts of the weapon is the stupidest thing. Ah, oh, I can't, I can't even. This weapon is so ugly and so stupid in concept and execution and shape it is the least pleasing thing to look at i know there are dumber things in kingdom hearts 3 but th conceptually this weapon is the worst idea to ever come out of keyblades so that's it for all the viewer submitted Keyblades, and I hope that you enjoyed this first round of Abitorials Minis. This was fun to look at some of these things and take a more partial look to the visual design of them. I'll have more cohesive topics next time. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope I didn't make too many Kingdom Hearts fans too angry with this, but this is just my opinion on here. You don't have to listen to what I say. I'm looking at this from a design perspective. If it means anything to you, or if it means anything to the lore of the game, then honestly, yeah, you can enjoy that however you wish. I'm not going to tell you how to enjoy these Keyblades. I'm just looking at this from my design standards for how weapons should be designed. I'll have more of these coming up later in the future, but for now, we're going to close it off here. Thank you guys for listening, and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for all the usual reach out stuff to get your to get your sugar punch in your subscription box. We have a Patreon for getting early access to all of our videos in case you want to see them a week early or so. I'm ABI, and I will see you all later.